question of time before the Argentinians arrived, the men braced themselves for an air attack. Then, at 10.30, all hell broke loose. The Argentinian High Command sent in wave after wave of their fighter bombers from the mainland. For five hours, these aircraft bombed and strafed the fleet sitting in the bay. The surrounding hills made it almost impossible for the ship's radars to detect the enemy aircraft. So the British were unable to get a fix on the attacking planes until it was too late. From these positions up here, the Paris had a grandstand view of the action in the bay. All their supplies for the land campaign were still being unloaded from those ships coming under attack. The Paris had to watch helplessly as their lifeline was under fire. By the end of the day, five British warships were hit and one ship, HMS Ardent, was sinking. And the attacks continued on the next day. The British had positioned anti-aircraft missiles around the bay, but it would be days before these delicate units were operational. On the water, the men had resorted to strapping machine guns onto the ship's rails in a desperate attempt to hit the low-flying Argentinian jets. More conventional anti-aircraft guns, some operated by sailors as young as 17, did score a few successes. But all these efforts did little to blunt the relentless onslaught of the Argentinian Air Force. The British ships unloading vital supplies for the land campaign made easy targets. On May the 23rd, HMS Antelope, just out there, was the next vessel to take a fatal hit. We watched with lumps in our throats as Antelope raged with fire and finally sank. She was our escort and everybody felt a great loss. She was more than just a ship to us. In four days, eight British ships were damaged and two sunk. During these attacks, 25 men died and many more were injured. While the British were reeling from the attacks in San Carlos water, the Argentinians were celebrating their triumphs. On the 25th of May, it was Argentina's National Day, a day of patriotic ceremony. And after the successes of their air campaign, Menendez and his troops in the Falklands had even more reason to celebrate. Subordinación y valor. But it wasn't over yet. The Argentinian Air Force was preparing another raid that would hit the British land campaign where it really hurt. A massive container ship, the Atlantic Conveyor, had just arrived from Britain. She was loaded with thousands of tons of supplies, but more importantly, the helicopters needed by the British forces to get them to Stanley. She was preparing to go into San Carlos that night. At 3.36 p.m. on the 25th of May, two Argentinian aircraft flying from the mainland picked up the British carrier group just off East Falkland. Once in range, they released their exocets. The missiles locked on to two frigates. The ships fired up metal foil to confuse the missile's radar, and the exocets